Well, hey there, oceanography students. I'm glad that you're back for another flippy, 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 flip class. In this flip class, we're going to talk about uh, tsunamis or seismic sea waves. They're totally awesome, totally destructive. Look, different background scheme too, where the text is light. But there's a couple things you need to know. These are not tidal waves. This is a very common misuse of the word tidal wave. People use them for tsunami. They are not tsunami. They are tidal waves controlled by the tides. Those come in daily and they are from stuff like the moon, doing moon stuff. We'll talk about those later. Today we're talking about tsunamis. There's a little bit more about tidal waves. Uh, they're predictable. They happen regularly. They affect thousands of miles. They're still pretty big, so that's why a lot of people lump them in with seismic sea waves, but they are actually very, very different. Here's a picture showing you the low tide in the Bay of Bengal, and you can see that the next picture will be the high tide in the Bay of Bengal. Same place, very different area. Huge amount of area. You can see down here you have like houses and stuff. So just to give you an idea of the perspective, you know, we're, we're way far out. But again, that's not what a tsunami is. So what is it? It is a giant and violent pile of violence. Mmm, tsunami. In the open ocean, they actually don't tend to do very much. They're a few inches tall. You know, five to ten centimeters since we're keeping it nice and clean and metric. So they're pretty little, but they have a super long wavelength. On average, the wavelength for these waves will be over 200 kilometers. In addition to that, the wave speed is very fast. The movement of the wave, it actually moves. Each crest of the wave will move in about 700 kilometers per hour, which is, yeah, that's fast, like airplane fast. When it reaches land, you've got all that water spread over that big long wavelength, it tends to pile up on itself, and that's when they get big and terrifying. Again, because it's coming into a shallow area that is affected by tides and tidal waves, a lot of people call it a tidal wave, but still not a tidal wave. So I don't want you guys to think of tsunamis as a large wave as much as a huge surge of water. Think of it like the storm surge that comes from a hurricane and it reacts and piles up coming into land in a very similar way. It's a flood of water, floods the area, destroys everything. This is the badness. As a result, you get these drastic uh, increases in sea level. Within a matter of minutes, the coastal sea level in the event of tsunami can raise 40 meters. The super high dive that people can break their neck off of is 10 meters. All right, So this is four of those piled up on the top of each other. If you give you a little perspective. And after all that, this is uh, what you see. These are people, these are palm trees, that is a giant tsunami coming on the shore, and uh, well, yeah, these people are probably uh, not gonna have a good time. Here's some more pictures. This is showing you uh, the Indian Ocean storm surge coming in in 2004. There was a huge tsunami uh, right when I graduated from high school. Uh, here is the seawall. It's coming up into this uh, resort. That was bad. Here is uh, that same thing. And it actually spread uh, from earthquake. That lasted about 10 minutes. Right here next to Indonesia, <clears throat> you got some plate tectonic action. And remember we talked about how waves can be formed from drastic changes underneath the seafloor. Tsunamis are the ones that come from that sort of thing. So you can see you got this earthquake that focuses in this area right here. And as a result, the water spread in that elliptic, on well, that uh, circular wave pattern, not an orbital wave. This is different. This is a big old tsunami wave just <laughs> spreading out through the entire ocean. And pretty much all of this uh, got smashified in the smasher zone. Here's a before the tsunami comes in picture. And here is the after. Notice how, uh, there you, yeah, that's bad. That's bad. So the technical term for tsunamis are the seismic sea wave. Here's a nice diagram that shows pretty much what I just talked about. 
you have a motion from faulting either dropping or rising that causes a huge displacement in the water. It bubbles up and it spreads in 360 degrees. This is just showing you one of the ways. And in deep water, it's pretty small. This is really over-exaggerated. In shallower water, it starts to pile up. And then when you hit the shore, that's where the badness comes in. It piles up on the continental shelf and makes huge waves, uh, you know, 40 meters and up. Here's a tsunami that hit Hilo, Hawaii in 1946. And you can see that this is a parking meter that got bent. Ah, so much power in the water. So, who's to blame for the tsunamis? There's a sudden change in the seafloor. That's what will give you a little tsunami action. Earthquakes are therefore to blame, and also submarine landslides. Anytime you've got a, on your continental slope a big turbidity current comes through, that can actually kick off a little bit of a sudden change in the seafloor as well. Even down in the deep sea trenches, volcanic eruptions are another one. Basically, any event that causes the volume of seawater to a shift. They're not usually at strike slip faults since those are more of a horizontal movement. We're looking for areas of vertical movement, which means, you guessed it, all that plate tectonics, all those marine regions, yes, you still need to know them, and yes, you're still going to be tested on them. Just now, I'm going to ask you about waves and currents and stuff. Probably the rarest but coolest type of a tsunami that you'll have will come from splash waves where big things splash in the water. For example, giant meteorites like that one that hit Russia like last year or a couple years ago or way back in the day depending on when you end up watching this video. Giant meteorites, anything that splashes in the ocean, let's say, you know, International Space Station comes down, that sort of thing. That, ooh, that would be bad. I hope that doesn't happen. That'd be scary. I'm scared already. In class, we're going to talk a little bit about tsunami early warning system. We're talking about places where you should hide in the event of a tsunami, which would be high ground. You should do that as soon as an earthquake hits if you're in a tsunami warning area. And we're going to do a little lab model what happens with tsunamis. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you've got questions that are not related to Dora the Explorer, go ahead and put them in the Moodle. Thanks for watching, everybody.